Hello, my friends. This is The Art of Prepping. Thanks for joining me today. I'm just going to do a simple video out in the woods. Uh, so there's not going to be any uh, distraction. No pictures uh, flashing on the screen of mayhem. And uh, just listen to what I have to say. It's all about uh, what I have to say about things today and then what I can show you on the screen. So we're talking today about nuclear and non-nuclear EMPs, which stands for electromagnetic pulse. Now let's start with the non-nuclear. These are geomagnetic solar storms that produce solar flares, and they have different classes, A, B, C, M, and X class. Uh, each of them are tenfold in energy than the one before it. So a B class is ten times more powerful uh, than an A class. Now, the A through C classes are not typically noticed by humans on Earth. Uh, but the M class does uh, create some disturbances up in the poles. Now, the X class, though, is what we're really concerned about. Uh, these can bring down the entire system. Now, let's talk about nuclear EMPs. Uh, these could be detonated in the form of a nuclear weapon in the upper atmosphere. <clears throat> these would fry electronics in the line of sight for hundreds of square miles, even, potentially even further, depending on elevation. It fries the chips in the electronics by creating a surge of voltage and or current. And most countries are not hardened for a natural or man-made EMP. The pulse occurs when a nuclear weapon above the visual horizon line at an altitude between 40 to 400 kilometers, it detonates from a nuclear warhead which releases photons in the form of gamma, radiation, and x-rays. These energetic particles scatter in every direction away from the blast. Many of these particles descend and interact with the magnetic field lines of the Earth where they become trapped. The trapped electrons then create an oscillating electric current within the field, which rapidly produces a large electromagnetic field in the form of a pulse. So the question here today is, in what way does an EMP threaten a modern society? So I have an outline here of 16 ways an EMP could interrupt and potentially decimate a modern society. It's just a matter of when an EMP will occur, and not if. Even if a man-made EMP never happens, you still have solar activity. And this will eventually hit the Earth again as it has in the past. So this video was created to help increase your awareness of this situation, to help motivate you to become more prepared, and not to create more fear. Let's now go into the 16 ways an EMP could interrupt or destroy a modern society. The grid would be compromised or destroyed. And we're talking about, in this grid, the electrical grid, the power grid. The transformers would probably be utterly destroyed, especially those in substations and on poles. There's no question about it. The actual electrical lines itself could catch fire or melt or fuse together at various junction areas. This would be um, a total breakdown in our infrastructure. Our society, at least in modern societies, first world countries, rely heavily. In fact, they are dependent on their electrical networking, their electrical grid. And there are not enough people who are on solar panels and things like that to overcome this problem. Because of this compromise of the electrical grid, the ability to pump gasoline could not occur. And this is going to start the chain reaction that people cannot travel. They cannot get to any place. And on the flip side, those who bring in goods to larger cities 
will not have the resources to do such. So in a matter of hours to days, those who need to travel will not have the energy source to do such. And there is the beginning of the breakdown of society. But before everything breaks down, people are going to notice that the pumps do not work because there's no electricity to bring in fresh water into the homes and to push out uh, any kind of sewage waste. And so you're going to have limited access, if no access at all, to fresh water. And you're going to have a building up of sewage. And that will back up eventually and potentially go out into the streets. Um, and this is going to start the process of a major um, crisis in terms of sanitation. And this will, over time, uh, breed diseases. And this, over a long period of time, will cause a lot of death. Communication systems will be the next thing people notice. The cell phones don't work. Landlines don't work. Even if the cell towers have backup generators, which they typically do, it would be of no help because the electronics themselves would be fried. There would be some two-way radios that would continue to work, but most of them use repeaters, which are on towers to help um, amplify that signal strength and to rebroadcast. And uh, without those, you don't get much distance with your two-way radios. You wouldn't be able to use your credit card, your debit card, to make any type of financial transactions electronically. You'd have to have cash. This would be a major problem on the system. Financial markets, trading, uh, financial assets, stocks, bonds, any of those things, would come to an immediate halt. Uh, this would terrorize a lot of people. Um, this would actually uh, be a very stressful event for those people in those fields to see that their ability to trade with the rest of the world uh, was not available. It should be uh, pretty obvious by now that the internet access uh, would be pretty much non-existent. There may be some situations that you may be able to link up with a satellite system, but for the most part, all local internet uh, would be most likely completely unavailable. Many of the modern vehicles would not work. Um, so if you have a pre-1970s vehicle, you have a higher chance of your car starting. Uh, but anything uh, you know that's newer than that, uh, you have a high chance, depending on how close you are uh, to the EMP pulse blast, of the car not working. So just to keep uh, a thought about this, to have an alternative means of travel besides foot. That may include a bicycle uh, or another means. Main transportation hubs would probably come to an immediate stop. That includes train stations, airports, and bus depots. Um, there is a lot of very scary evidence that not only cars would just stop uh, right in the middle of the highway, but planes would just fall from the sky. Medical resources will become more limited as time goes on after an EMP. If you live in a rural area and need medical attention, you may not get it even if you travel to a larger town or city. In fact, you may be going into a more dangerous area. So you have to weigh your options accordingly. Even if you got to a hospital, you're not guaranteed that they're going to have staff members present. A lot of the technology may not be functional. Uh, and uh, especially if it's a days or even weeks after an EMP, uh, the hospital may be out of medicine. It's also worthy to point out that people who are on ventilators or any other equipment to keep you alive uh, could potentially stop, especially if you're in a home or in an environment that does not have a backup 
uh, generator or electrical system. Um, this is going to possibly take out a lot of people very quickly in the first few days. Many people use electricity for heating and cooling of their home. Uh, this would now limit that option. You would also have those who use microwaves and electric ovens not to be able to prepare food. Because people will now have a limitation in their travels, and because there are not any new trucks coming in to the town to resupply, especially for food and medicine, that you will have a lot of problems within three days, typically speaking, in most towns, of the masses becoming unable to feed themselves or to source material for their family. It has been shown that between the first and second week, uh, people will start starving. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And there's even more reports saying that cannibalism could even occur around the second week because people are that unprepared. It has been uh, shown that a lot of people, especially in the United States, only have three to seven days of food in the pantry, and that's it. And most of them do not have any water stored. So this is something to kind of take lessons for right now, you know, to have some resources. Because this could happen at any time, any moment this could happen. And while you should not live your life in fear, if you're prepared for this, you can get through it a lot easier than being one of the people that are going to be in a full-blown panic because they don't have any options because they didn't create any. Don't forget, though, during this whole process that the safety net that we typically enjoy in modern society will most likely be minimized, if not totally removed. And that's our public safety system. Your ability to call law enforcement, medical services, or even the fire department will most likely not be available. Uh, besides medical emergencies and crime, when there's a house fire, you will have to deal with it yourself. And this is going to be very dangerous and very dense urban areas where large areas could go up in flames and kill many people. It is believed that once people realize the level of damage that has been done to the infrastructure and that the modern way of living has been removed from their access, they will start to panic and chaos will ensue. Crime rates will go up and law and order will be a distant memory. It is important to think at this point that starvation, dehydration, disease, the inability to keep yourself warm in your home, and your personal safety needs will be at the forefront of your mind. And if this isn't enough, we have nuclear power plants throughout the USA that require electric pumps to pump water in to help keep the rods from overheating. Uh, these power plants do have typically a litany of diesel uh, backup generators to continue the pumping of water but there is only a finite amount of diesel fuel available as these backup generators will consume them over time. So it is easy to see why people ignore this threat because it is so overwhelming on a personal level. But it does not mean that it won't happen. It will eventually. Hopefully not in our lifetime. But if it does... Are you prepared?